ARFID um, stands for Avoidant Restrictive Food Intake Disorder and it's a pretty recently defined eating disorder um, which is used for people that eat either a too low amount of food or a very limited range of food and this, this leads to very serious consequences um, such as weight loss or nutritional deficiencies or also that people cannot, cannot be at school or go to work anymore and uh, are isolating themselves. The difference between ARFID and other eating disorders is that it has nothing to do with um, body dissatisfaction. So people do not restrict their food intake because they want to lose weight, like we see it in anorexia nervosa, for example. Instead, um, it can be a sensory aversion to certain characteristics of food, such as uh, the taste and smell of foods that um, keeps people from eating them. It could also be that they just have a very low appetite and are not interested in eating, or that they are afraid of negative consequences of eating, such as choking on food or vomiting or allergic reactions. So we don't know much yet about what causes ARFID, and um, this makes it very difficult to develop effective treatments. So from other eating disorders, we know that um, genetic factors play a major role. So we were wondering if uh, also ARFID is genetically influenced. We use the TWIN method, which is uh, a way to look at genetic influences. And because we know that identical twins share all of their genes and non-identical twins share about 50% of the genes that make people different, uh, we can compare these two types of twins. And when we then see that for a certain characteristic, identical twins are more similar to each other than the non-identical twins, this is an indicator of genetic influence and we can estimate the degree to which a characteristic is influenced by the genes. We found that genetic factors play a major role in ARFID. So 70 to 85 percent of the variance, whether people um, develop ARFID or not, was explained by genetic factors. Well, we did expect that ARFID would be uh, influenced by genetics, but we were a bit surprised um, that it was that much, actually, because this um, puts ARFID together with the most heritable uh, mental disorders, such as, for example, uh, ADHD and autism. And it also shows us that ARFID might be the most heritable eating disorder, because um, anorexia nervosa, bulimia nervosa and binge eating disorder are uh, to a lesser degree influenced by genetics. These results are important because first of all they show us that um, genetic studies can really be a way to understand what causes ARFID, so now we need to go ahead and really dive into this and study uh, the specific genes that are associated with ARFID to identify biological pathways and then develop better treatments. But um, our results are also important because they can reduce stigma and blame, which uh, is a big problem in eating disorders. Um, so a child doesn't choose to develop ARFID and neither can a parent really cause ARFID uh, in a child. So this is very important to know. The connection between ARFID and autism and ADHD is that they often occur together. So many children with autism have ARFID and many children with ARFID have autism. But um, it's by far not all the children uh, with ARFID that also have autism and the other way around. Sometimes people think that um, ARFID is a symptom of autism, um, but it's really a separate disorder. Uh, it's a separate problem that needs clinical attention and it's very important uh, to, to look for it and to diagnose it so it can be treated.